Hi, this is EBP Man with TabletsForMe.com, and I received several emails from you all asking questions on is the iPad a kid friendly device? Out of the box, the iPad, just like any other PC or tablet for that matter, um, is really not configured to be used by a child. So, what we'll do today is go through some settings that you can enable that will prevent your child from making purchases, installing and deleting apps and also to set some limits as to what type of content they can view. Let's take a look. So what we'll do is we'll go into settings. Uh, what I'll do is go into general. And you'll notice that there's an area um, in uh, the iPad that has a restriction setting. This area right here. So we'll touch restrictions and uh, the restrictions are currently disabled so I'm going to enable them. And once you enable them, it's going to ask you to put in a password. So I'll go ahead and put in a password, and for the sake of this presentation, we'll just put the number 1234. Important, pretty obvious, but important that your kid doesn't know what that password is. Now, a couple of things that I'll show you that you should change. First of all, uh, one of the things that I would change is I disable Safari. And I'll explain that in a couple seconds. So we're going to disable Safari. We're also going to disable YouTube. And I'm going to disable YouTube because there's content in YouTube that I really can't control and I don't want my young child going in and messing around with YouTube and me not being able to know what they're doing in YouTube. The other thing I'll disable is this pinging. They won't use that. They'll listen to music. Um, installing apps, again, I'll control that. Deleting apps, oh no, I want to make sure my iPad is intact when I get it back. And the other thing I'll do is I'll disable my child's ability to uh, mess with my account settings, especially when it comes to my emails. So. I've locked that down so nothing can change there. This is an area that can take you to the poorhouse and this is in-app purchases. What I'll do is disable in-app purchases and the reason why you want to disable this is that I've uh, received emails uh, from some folks mentioning that the their child actually almost took them to the poorhouse because the games nowadays have within the game the ability to purchase credits or special powers and while they had locked out installing apps and they thought, well, now they won't be able to, to buy anything. The child thought this was part of the game, and they actually purchased a lot of stuff using the in-app purchase. So I'll disable that. The other area you'll notice right here off the bat is the podcast is set to explicit. I don't want my child listening to explicit music. I want it to be clean. The movie settings, if I do allow for downloads, I want to keep it at a PG level, so I'll choose that. Uh, TV shows, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to keep it at a PG level. I'll go back. And as far as apps go, if I were to allow them to install some apps, um, being that my child is around 11 years old, I'm going to keep it at the 9 plus limit. Now that I've made those changes, the other area that many parents uh, really don't focus on is the multiplayer games. Multiplayer games are great. Uh, so I'm going to leave this on for my child. Uh, 11 years old, he can play with, with his friends uh, on his iPad. But one of the things I'll do is I'll disable the ability to add friends. Uh, this is an area that I'm concerned of as a parent, and you may be as well, because the adding friends, sometimes our children are too trusting, and they don't know who they're adding, and they just add them because it sounds like a friendly person or sounds like someone they may know. So this is something that um, I'll disable as well. Now, the one thing about these settings, and, and this area right here, it makes us feel really good because you notice that there's a lot of controls when it comes to content. Uh, Unfortunately, these controls do not influence or make any kind of filtering decisions when it comes to what happens in Safari. That's why I disabled Safari. So even though I have all these settings here for clean content, PG-13, TV, PG, and 9 plus apps, my son or daughter, your child, can actually get into any website uh, if Safari is enabled. The same thing is with YouTube. And I'm not saying that they want to get in there, uh, but they could mistakenly get in there. So by disabling this and YouTube, um, you have uh, better control. Now when I go back to General, uh, you'll notice that it says Restrictions is on. And if I go back to my home screen, you'll notice that the icon for Safari is gone. If I try to press and hold to remove something, so what I'll do is I'll press and hold on, on this app, you notice that the plus uh, or the X sign doesn't show up as something that I can delete or disable. I'll go back. And the other thing that you notice is that if I want to go ahead and modify this, I'm going to go back into restrictions, it's going to ask me for a password. So if I put the wrong password, it's not going to let me in unless you put, again, the right password. So I'll put in the right password. 
do one, two, three, four. Now I'm back into this area. So this is how you can secure your iPad, again, from a content perspective that you get from Apple, uh, multiplayer games and the adding of friends. And I'll tell you, I have these settings for my child, and it's been now a year, and he's okay with this. He has no problem here. Um, also, then, some of the apps that I would recommend, settings that I would also disable. What I'll show you in a couple seconds is how can you also then install a browser that will also be kid-friendly because there is a browser that will allow you to filter and manage the content that your son or daughter, your child, um, is actually viewing. Let's take a look at that. Okay, let me show you this um, product. Um, if you recall, just a couple of seconds ago, I'm using a different iPad. This is my youngest child's iPad now. The other one was mine. Um, I talked about a controlled browser where my child wouldn't be able to go to sites that were in, had inappropriate content. The name of the browser is MobySip, and it's available on the um, Apple market. It's available for $4.99, and I can tell you that it's well, well, well worth the money. So let's talk about some of the features of this solution. So when I click on it and I start it up, uh, I, it looks like the standard browser uh, that comes along with the Safari browser, but there are some changes. Uh, first of all, um, if I were to type in, um, let's say, the word dino, and my son loves dinosaurs, so I'll choose dinosaurs, and I do a search, immediately I'm able to find information on dinosaurs. So this is the kind of stuff that it's okay for him to look for. But let's say another term is inputted. Let's type in the word sex. All right? I want to do search. Notice what happens. Nothing. Well, we say blocks inappropriate content. It stops your child from going to that website. From Googling it, stops it from being entered in the uh, actual URL. It pretty much blocks all of that content. Now, they do have a website that you can subscribe to which adds additional filtering and monitoring. And that is an additional subscription of $9.99. I do know some schools that actually have implemented um, where they are distributing iPads to kids for use um, in the classroom where they've implemented MobiSip. But this is a great tool for parents. Once again, it gives you the control to allow your child to go to the things that are, you know, that they want to go to. So if they want to go to a dinosaur Wikipedia page to learn more about dinosaurs, they can go there. But if they inadvertently type in a URL to a website that has inappropriate content, uh, the browser will prevent them from going there. Uh, if they type into a Google search, they will not be able to YouTube. Um, all those type of controls are available in this browser. So I highly recommend this uh, for any parent that's out there that is considering giving their child an iPad uh, for use or that lends their child the iPad for use. So I have two browsers on my machine. I can have the MobiSip browser that you see here and I can have my Safari one and when I hand uh, the iPad over for my children to play with uh, for whatever reason I can enable my restrictions as I showed you earlier and then th and disable the other browser and this is the only one that they'd be able to navigate through. So take a look at MobiSip, take a look at uh, this video and the settings that you can enable to protect your child and create a kid-friendly experience when it comes to the iPad. If you have any questions, um, leave your comments at tabletsforme.com or leave them on the YouTube channel. Thank you.